Hi, and welcome to this tutorial about using components with known vulnerabilities. This is the ninth, and the almost the last of the series of the OS top 10 on my channel. So let's begin. So what is OWASP A9, components with known vulnerabilities, all about? Uh, first of all, we need to make sure that you understand some technical stuff about using a library that we, <coughs> that we don't keep up to date with vulnerabilities or even consider them at the beginning. Um, using libraries, of course, is a thing we need to do when we develop systems on an everyday basis. If it's like a web page, if it's a application, or maybe it's a server that you need to install things on. So you use a library. If you're not aware of the library you're using, it might have some known or, well, unknown <laughs> at best vulnerabilities. So it's very important that you, you, do, you, you, you research the library you're going to use and make sure that it's without any known vulnerabilities. Now, I said known vulnerabilities. There are, of course, this a term called zero-day exploits. And a zero-day exploit is basically something that the hackers know, but the vendors does not know. So it's something that exists, but no one really knows about it. It is primarily sold on the dark web and it can be quite a lot of money worth. Okay, so using libraries <clears throat> from untrusted sources uh, because it is all we can find. <clears throat> I think we all been there at some point. We want, to we want to develop something and we need some special reaction from a, some web application with some images for some, let's say, pres presentation of images in a, let's say, um, what is it called? A gallery. Then we use some weird library, some backend code, some JavaScript code. We just implement it really naive and just use it. Well, in those cases, you need to tell yourself, I will write it myself. Create your own functionality. Then you know what you get. We use server software or components that have known vulnerabilities and often leave unneeded functionality enabled. Okay, so whenever you install a service, use some software, create a, uh, some, some uh, project with some libraries. Whenever you implement the libraries, they are most likely configured, what I call like neutrally configured. They're not configured for your context. They're not configured for your server or your application. They are probably just configured for, well, a broad spectrum of different kind of applications. So whenever you roll it out, it just works. Well, that is called, well, I guess you call it user feature or convenience. However, most occasions it does leave you some vulnerabilities. Database operation systems and all other components are all potential risks. You need to be aware <clears throat> that whenever you, you're working with some, some system or database or operating system or anything basically, everything needs to be maintained. We need to be aware of the version of your software and what is the newest version. There are many other things you need to be aware of of course, but the whole thing is to begin think about it. When you think about security and you think about uh, the things you need to do, you're already in that loop and the process, and then you most likely will find all the other things and try and fix it. When you have no process for monitoring and updating, we are vulnerable. Now, this is a typical thing, also something that kind of being borrowed from the last one, uh, monitoring and locking in the OS series. If you have your process and it's not monitoring for update, well, if then you cannot really say when something went wrong. So what if you wanna verify that a certain library you use is out of date? How would you verify that? If you don't know much about the software, don't know much about it, but you know how to look in logs and you have a somewhat okay idea of security. Maybe that 
log file or the monitoring service can tell you something. So using components with known vulnerabilities can be many different things. And this is the top five explanations that I could find. How common is it? It is unfortunately very common. Um, and basically we can just go back to the other slide and say, <clears throat> how many times have you installed a piece of software without actually configuring it and putting it online or just having it available on your um, campus or, or at your work or someplace. So I guess we all tried that, right? Even I do it sometimes. It's very human to just forget about it. So what can we do about that? What can we do about all these humans that just keep forgetting stuff. That is the prime thing in security. In most occasions, humans are the very, very weakest link. Unless you leave some very obvious flaw of SQL injection or something, just like advertising it on the web page, that might be a bit worse. <laughs> okay, so we came from the, the question, how common is it? <clears throat> well, this might be a shock to you but almost all evocations will contain vulnerable components, okay? However, it doesn't mean that they're all exploitable. Some components have a certain amount of some vulnerability that might not be exploitable. So how, how can something be vulnerable and not exploitable? Well, it could be that it shows something that you might want it not to show. It's very hard to give an example, but that might not lead to an actual exploit, but it might lead a hacker to think, hmm, but never really gets anything out of it. That could be a, a particular um, vulnerable thing in a component that won't be exploitable. So this is the most important part, how to fix it, right? So remove unneeded components and dependencies. <laughs> that is the one number one primer. If you don't need it, don't need it, just remove it, right? Really easy. Use tooling to automate version management. Well, you can do it like two different ways. Either you have a tool constantly checking, am I up to date with different kinds of things on your computer or your server? But it can also scan your computer and scanning, well, whatever version ever having, and then you can do the manual update. I suggest both. Try and only use legit legitimate libraries that can be trusted. Very hard to do, but in reality, it is not that hard. Have a policy process for unmaintained components. So what is unmaintained components? An unmaintained component is something that is not maintained, <laughs> basically. Something that is not looked for, something that is not coded in anymore, something that you don't really care about. It could be something you created or another one created at your job. It could also be something you found on the internet. So how would you manage that? Does it happen that sometimes you just need to use a library that is not maintained um, because it is the only thing there is? It does happen. And I must say that sometimes you just have to stick with it and try and maybe sandbox it in some way, which is also one of the how to fix it answers, use sandboxing. Deploy additional controls for protected. Yes. This is, a diff this is a particularly different one to explain in short. So I'm going to try. When you want <clears throat> to implement some cr con cr controls, it could be some software to monitor your versions. Um, using components with known vulnerabilities could also be some software that know which kind of uh, components you're using and it constantly try and scan it in some way. And I know this sounds bit off and process heavy and it is a bit off and process heavy so i would suggest doing some regular scans instead of that and make sure that you look for known vulnerabilities on different kind of vulnerability websites there is and read blogs and news sites about security and cybersecurity to get the newest feed of maybe this could be vulnerable for my application <clears throat> Use consistent environment, uh, continuous deployment, continuous integration, continuous deli delivery. <clears throat> you could use some development operation setup that actually do a lot of things for you that humans are prone to 
um, you know, forget or just not do well enough. Consider using some cloud solution. Uh, for example, if you don't have the money or the expertise to set up your own infrastructure or service or to install different things on your computer, then it might be a really good idea for you to hire some, <coughs> some cloud provider service. It could be something. So I want to give you an example of something I call known vulnerabilities. And I have a website here I'm going to pull in on the site here. So this is a website that I created a long time ago. Uh, the language is something called Danish, but it doesn't really matter that much. <clears throat> so basically it's called the green website. The green website is a collection of really bad programmer choice. So you can find numerous different kinds of vulnerabilities on this website. Components with known vulnerabilities could be <clears throat> that for example, For example, that you know that this application or the certain CMS system you're using for this site, let's just say assume that this CMS system used is called the green side CMS system. Well, we all know that the green side uh, CMS system, whenever you pick something on the front page here, these are categories and the last one is called team leader. It might make sense for you because the other ones is uh, in Danish. Supporter program, you might know the words, however, Team leader could be uh, the one you pick. And if you look at the, up in the uh, URL, you see that, oh, we have the very normal um, URL parameter called GID. It's uh, short for group ID. Well, it's just something that I created for that. It could be anything, basically, right? So we see this is a number. And of course, we know that whenever we're using this SMS system, we have a normal SQL injection flaw. I put in the, the small uh, fling or the uh, singular um, hyphen. And we see we have some, some old fatal error on court exception uh, with a fetch ASOC using a um, deprecated API from the PHP library, which is in this case a known vulnerability. I know, could this not just be a bad programmer's choice on some newly created software from yesterday? Of course it could be. But the whole point of using components for known vulnerabilities is actually to understand that it could be basically anything. A vulnerability can be anything from the, anything from OS top 10 list, or anything from any other top whatever list it is. So it's very hard for me to just show, show something that says, this is a known vulnerability. Well, this is a known vulnerability. It's called this current injection. And it is from this CMS site that I created. Well, the website I created with a CMS system called the green CMS that I invented is really badly coded. It is meant for showcases only. So having that said, uh, next time we will look at the very last one on the OWASP series. And I hope you like this video and you will like it and subscribe to my channel. See you again.